A record-setting season for Aaron Rodgers? That and more predictions today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets. Your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, September 8th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted if you do. If you enjoy the show and are listening on the podcast, first give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this video a big thumbs up. It helps us out and helps other Jets fans find the show. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. Well, almost every other NFL fan can look forward to this weekend to get the 2023 season underway. We have to wait a little bit longer. So on today's show, we're going to make some predictions about the 2023 New York Jets. The Jets don't kick off until Monday night against the Buffalo Bills. So on Monday, of course, we'll have our preview show. Let's make some predictions. And I'm, I want to start at the quarterback position. And I, I don't think I need to tell you if you're a Jets fan. I don't think I need to tell you if you're an NFL fan. I don't need, think I need to tell you if you have even the slightest knowledge of pro- American professional sports that the Jets traded for Aaron Rodgers this offseason. And that's a big deal. And I'm not sure Jets fans are ready for what's about to come here because we have had just bad quarterback season after bad quarterback season. And occasionally, and this goes back decades, occasionally there's been like this one glimmer of hope, you know, an oasis of hope, you know, like Ryan Fitzpatrick's 2015 season, a couple of seasons with Chad Pennington, maybe like a one month stretch with Brett Favre back in 2008, where you've gotten good quarterback play, but, you're about to go from the worst quarterback play in the NFL, or not the worst. I mean, I haven't, I, I look, I didn't closely study all 32 teams last year, but it was bad. And if it wasn't the worst, it was close to being the worst with Zach Wilson and Joe Flacco and Mike White. And of the three, Mike White was probably the best. I love Mike White. I love, I'll always love what he did against Cincinnati in 2021 or the Bears last year. But when Mike White gives you your best quarterback play of the season, it's a rough time. So you're going from that, and you've had bad quarterback play going back a really long time. You know, Zach Wilson's rookie season was bad. Sam Darnold, you know, had a few good games, but never really put it together. Um, You go back. Geno Smith finally put it together last year. It was with Seattle, you know, 10 years into his career. Um, Mark Sanchez, you know, the team had success, but Sanchez, despite, again, a few a few real standout moments never really put it together consistently. You're about to go from that to elite quarterback play to future Hall of Fame quarterback play. And, you know, this probably is not going to be like the vintage Aaron Rodgers, the greatest Aaron Rodgers you've ever seen. But he's still smart as ever. His arm's still plenty good. Aaron Rodgers is going to give the Jets a great season, I think. And I think there are going to be a couple, indiv- a couple individual team records that will fall. And I'm looking at the quarterback position. The Jets team record for passing yards is 4,007 yards, and that was done by 1967 by Joe Namath. And to give you context, that was a record-setting season in professional football. Namath was over 600 yards ahead of the guy who finished second in the American Football League that year. So 4,000 yards, 1967, that was incredible. In 2022, 4,007 yards, that put you 10th in the NFL. So I think it's very reasonable. If you're expecting Aaron Rodgers to be a top 10 quarterback this year, he should be able to beat that pretty easily. And it's amazing that the Jets have not gotten another 4,000-yard season since 1967 because, first of all, it's not that hard. Second of all, especially the last couple of years, you've had 17 games. So so there are a lot more games than there, than there used to be, a lot more, lot more opportunities, and that doesn't even go into how much easier it is to pass than it was in 1967. You know, it wasn't until 1978 that the NFL instituted a rule that defensive backs could not impede receivers by getting physical more than five yards down the field. And this is a long way of telling you that you can't really compare stats, especially especially passing stats era to era in the NFL. But it also shows you that, how, first of all, how far ahead of 
the curve Namath was. I mean, you see these people out there that try and diminish Joe Namath and they look at the stats and like they, they try and put his stats into a 2023 context and it doesn't work. And people come up with these crazy things like Joe Namath was overrated or Joe Namath wasn't a great quarterback. He was. He, 4,007 yards in 20, uh, sorry, in 1967 was amazing. And what's even more amazing is no Jets quarterback in an era where it's not that hard to throw for 4,000 yards has done it since. But a, a good Aaron Rodgers season is going to beat that. And I think a good Aaron Rodgers season will also beat Ryan Fitzpatrick's 2015 record of 31 touchdowns. That was, again, a single-season team record the Jets had. Incredibly low record. In fact, Aaron Rodgers has beaten that number six times in his career and matched to the seventh time. So while I'm not expecting a career year out of Aaron Rodgers, a pretty good Aaron Rodgers season is going to beat this. And this doesn't go into the impact because statistics only mean so much, especially at the quarterback position. And you probably heard about it. I mean, Jet, the Jets players have been open to talking about that. If you're an everyday, you may remember my Thomas Morstead interview a couple months back where I spoke with the Jets punter and he talked about the impact Aaron Rodgers is having in the building where, you know, he's gotten to know everybody. Um, you know, you've seen, I've seen other suggestions in, in uh, various interviews that he's just teaching people things. He's teaching people how to prepare. He's teaching people how to look for clues that the defense is giving you that may tip off what the defensive coverage is going to be, what the defensive approach to a given play is going to be. It could be something as simple as footwork. He's going to have an outsized impact on this team. He already really has, even though we haven't played a game yet. But statistically, I mean, you're going to look at one of the great Jets quarterback seasons of all time. And again, part of that is you're comparing him to not a lot that's been great. I mean, you have Joe Namath, who's a legitimate Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, I can – probably a couple Ken O'Brien seasons, you know, the Vinny Testaverde season in 98, a couple Pennington years, the Fitzpatrick year in 2015. I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple. There haven't been a lot of particularly great quarterback seasons for the Jets, though. And, of course, quarterback is what makes the team – what is the most important part of any team. It's what makes the team go. And Jets are on the verge of getting their best quarterback play in some time, and you, you're going to enjoy it. I mean, it's – I think it's difficult to overstate – how much fun it is to watch your team have great quarterback play after a long stretch where it did not. And I think it's going to have a big impact on the team. I think it'll have a big impact on the Jets win loss record this year, because as we know last year, the Jets missed the playoffs for a lot of reasons. You can't pin it on any one thing, but probably the biggest reason is just they did not get what they needed from the quarterback position. You're going from what you got last year to Aaron Rodgers, pretty good. And I think one of the impacts is that it will end the longest playoff drought in the NFL. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we continue this Friday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. I'm going to say it. I hope I'm not wrong. I hope we're looking back on this in four months and thinking it's a great prediction. But I think the Jets are going to go to the playoffs this year. We'll discuss that continuing this Friday Locked On Jets episode. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. Clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician-formulated natural science-backed ingredients. Their drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through their whole body wellness. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning hair, such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. And it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months, taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplements. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code LOCKEDONNFL. Find out why 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men, and enter pro promo code LOCKEDONNFL. That's Nutrafol slash men, promo code LOCKEDONNFL. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. And a big shout out to you, Everydayers. We're a daily podcast covering the Jets. We have new episodes each day, Monday through Friday, and then bonus episodes as needed. Today, we're making predictions for the 2023 New York Jets. 
of course, NFL predictions are tough to make because unexpected things happen all the time. Sometimes you make good predictions and they just don't pan out. And sometimes making the playoffs comes down to luck. And, uh, you know, people don't want to hear it, but I think back to 2015, the Jets had a good team. They went 10 and six. They were like the only 10 and six team to miss the playoffs in the NFL for like a four year stretch. But because they just caught some bad luck and they were in a conference with six teams that won 11 or you know, five teams that won 11 games. And then a team that won a soft division in Houston that year, they missed the playoffs. And because of that, the jets have the longest playoff drought in the NFL and they have the longest playoff drought in any of the four major North American sports. When we're talking baseball, we're talking basketball, we're talking hockey, NBA, MLB, NHL, NFL. No team has had a longer playoff wait since the New York jets in 2010. I think it's going to end this year. I feel confident about that. Now, of course, you know, things can happen that are unexpected. You can have bad luck with injuries. You know, you don't want to have anything happen to the quarterback position, but that's one example. The Jets have had situations where quarterback goes down either in preseason or early in the season and it impacts everything. But I think the Jets would need a lot of bad luck to miss the playoffs this year, including something happening to the quarterback. Because if you look at it, this roster is pretty good. And, you know, even last year, the team ended the season very poorly. Team ended, you know, a long losing streak, you know, didn't win a game in the month of December or January. But even in that, I took some solace in one reality. And that's that's like regular NFL problems. That's like the, the kind of problem a typical NFL fan has. And it's not great. Of course, you never want to end the season on a losing streak. You never want to be in playoff position entering the final month of the year and then lose out and cost your team a postseason berth. You certainly don't want to get the quarterback play the Jets had, but that's like a more normal NFL problem than the Jets have had in recent years where they've been you know, dysfunctional on so many levels, whether you're talking about just horrific free agent signings, even signings that if you're paying attention at the time, you could tell that they were heading for disaster. or You could tell that they were overly risky for what the Jets needed to do. Or you're talking about just doing things like hiring Adam Gase as your head coach or letting Mike McCagnan spend like $120 million guaranteed and then firing him before they play a game because you decide, you know, he's not that good at his job, even though we just let him spend $120 million guaranteed having bad rosters where you're trying to like, not nothing against like a guy like Robbie Anderson, but a few years ago we had to like try and talk ourselves into Robbie Anderson as a number one receiver in this league or Jordan Jenkins, a good draft pick by the jets, but we had to talk ourselves into Jordan Jenkins being, you know, the number one pass rusher on a team that could win. These things just made no sense. Last year was rough. But last year, the team made strides, and you had this young core come in. Sauce Gardner, uh, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Elijah Vera Tucker really stepped up. There were disappointments. Of course, Zach Wilson failed to launch. Elijah Moore is now gone. And, you know, that was a failed draft pick. But the Jets are kind of back into like normal NFL territory, where a good season means a playoff berth. And if things really fall into place, you know, you could end up making a real run here. I don't know, you know, we'll see what happens. A lot of this will come down to luck. You know, health will be a factor. Aaron Rodgers' health, Mekhi Becton's health is going to be a big factor. But I think if everything goes the way it should, if the Jets just have neutral luck, they should make the playoffs. And a big part of this is Aaron Rodgers. Of course, last year the Jets missed the playoffs in part, and probably the number one reason was the quarterback play. You're not going back to play last season's schedule. Last season's schedule was really interesting because the Jets got a lot of backup quarterbacks. But the thing people miss, and people rightly point out that, you know, you have to put, put the wins into context when they beat the backup quarterbacks. But the thing people miss is the rest of the schedule is really hard. I mean, every time the Jets played a starting quarterback, the team had a, it won at least eight games. So they, they had no soft schedule. They had no soft parts of the schedule against teams that have their starting quarterback. So although they played a bunch of starting quarterbacks, the rest of the schedule was pretty tough. I think on the whole, the Jets' schedule was pretty hard last year. You know, they had a tough strength of schedule. So this year, even though the easy games will be less easy, on the whole, the schedule actually might be easier. You know, there might be less variation, but there should be some easier matchups, you would think, on paper. You know, you'll have to wait, you may have to wait till the second half of the season, but I think things will probably soften up, be softer this year on the schedule-wise than they were last year. But I am expecting Rodgers to play well. I'm expecting Garrett Wilson to be really good. You know, will he be Devonte Adams? Will he be a top five receiver? Well, you know, there's a great debate in the fan base about this, but I think it kind of misses the point. Garrett Wilson's really good, even if he produces what he did last year. If he does what he did a year ago, if he just repeats that, Jets are gonna. Have, he's a, that's a great season. He's a legitimate number one target. So you don't really, you know, I, I think that 
on some levels, this debate, whether Garrett Wilson is going to get better, whether he's going to become one of the top five receivers in the NFL, look, it'd be great if it could happen. And I'm not going to tell you it's impossible, but in some ways I feel like it's almost a moot point because what you got from last year from Garrett Wilson was really great. And then I think I don't need to tell you what's going to happen on the defensive side of the ball. Jets have a lot of depth on that defensive line. Lots of really good players. Even if they only have one great player in Quinn and Williams, they have a lot of good players and they can rotate them in and out. I've said this before. I'll say it again. You know, a typical elite defensive line, you have like, you have maybe you have a couple great players. So you're going to get a great play, great snap when they're in the game. Maybe they'll play 70% of the snap. So 70% of the time you're going to get a great snap on the defensive line and the other 30% will be okay. With the Jets, it's a little different because they're just rotating really good players. Even if they're no great players, they're a lot of very good players. So you essentially, instead of getting great 70% of the time and okay 30%, you're going to get really good 100% of the time. The Jets will just keep running guys in there. They'll keep them all fresh. And I think one of the key points is that for a Jets team that wants to play head a lot this year because you want Aaron Rodgers to take you to leads, you want your defensive line fresh to close out games. And I think if you go back to the Rex Ryan days, the Jets defense was always well, not always, but the first couple of years, the Jets defense was great under Rex. But even when they were having success, there was like one issue with that defense is that they never closed games out well. I mean, you could you could think of all the games that the defense allowed a game tying or game losing touchdown. I mean, they yeah, they closed out some games. The new the New England game in 2009 at home, they did they did a great job with. But that was one of the biggest issues with the Rex defense. They could never close games out. And I think that Salah's defense, when you talk about closing games out, is superior in one sense, and that's they will keep their defensive line fresh. So when they need the pass rush to be there, it will be there. And then, uh, you know, on the back of the defense with Sauce Gardner, with DJ Reed, even with Michael Carter the second, you've got a lot of good pieces. So you know that you've got offense, you've got Aaron Rodgers, and over the course of the season, I think Brees Hall is just going to get healthier and healthier. And then hopefully by November, December, it'll be the Brees Hall you saw last year. This is a good team. I mean, this is a roster that looks really good. And we know, I think anybody who followed the NFL knows Jets fans deserve a really enjoyable season and a really good team. And I think there are going to be some young players who may step up this year who could contribute to that good season that we're expecting. And as you're on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we'll close out this Friday episode by talking about some of the young players we're looking to step into bigger roles. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. This week on Prize Picks, you can select Aaron Rodgers for more than three passing touchdowns. You can select Justin Jefferson for less than 100 yards if you're feeling lucky. Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown. You can select Odell Beckham Jr. for more than 50 yards. Josh Allen for less than two passing touchdowns. We know the Jets defense is going to shut him down. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts, like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, it's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match of one, one, up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Friday. We're closing out our week, making some predictions because the Jets don't play until Monday. And on Monday's episode, we're going to break down week one action between the Jets and the Buffalo Bills. But in, until then, we can make a few predictions. I've talked about how I'm expecting Aaron Rodgers to set some Jets records this year talking about how I think the Jets are going to break their long playoff drought, and we have all de- we all deserve to see some playoff football coming in January. I also think that, you know, you could have some big seasons ahead for certain Jets, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Tony Adams is going to really impress everybody, and I'm going with that just because everybody around the team seems very excited about him. And, you know, to build a winner in the NFL, you got to hit on some undrafted free agents. you got to hit on some late-round picks. Because you only get one first-round pick every year. You only get one second-round pick. And there's only so much money you could spend on the salary cap. And typically, that does not add up. All these resources, these premium resources, don't add up to 22 solid starters, which means you got to hit on some guys. you got to get a little lucky sometimes. Because I think whenever there's a late-round pick or whenever there's a non-drafted free agent who steps into your lineup and plays well, it's two things. First of all, you did a good job identifying talent. But second of all, 
he got a little lucky because if the guy was such an obvious talent, you would have drafted him earlier and the rest of the league would have figured it out. Tony Adams seems like a guy. And the other day, Ian Eagles on the show, he's told us that the Jets think Tony Adams has Pro Bowl potential. You've just been hearing about him over and over. And the Jets did sign a really good safety or a guy who's asked to, at least has had a very good career in Adrian Amos. And it sounds like Tony Adams is going to start. Tony Adams is going to get a lot of playing time. Usually it doesn't happen for an undrafted free agent signing unless there's something there. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think Tony Adams is going to have a good season. Knock on wood. I, you know, Mekhi Becton really impressed me. It kind of felt to me like things were going in the wrong direction early in training camp, even entering training camp. And this goes, you, know, you can even go back to last year where it felt like there were some issues between the player and the, and the coaching staff. And then Becton gave an interview not that long ago where he went out of his way to criticize the Jets. You know, it's one thing, you know, sometimes you're in an interview and you maybe misstate something. It's another, sometimes like a reporter may ask you a gotcha question and he answered it incorrectly. Becton went out of his way to criticize the Jets in that interview. And it was a little case. It was kind of a case where I was wondering, you know, is this the end of the relationship? And Beckton went out and just earned the starting right tackle job. It was not handed to him. He was not practicing much with the first team. And he went out there and took it. And there was nothing that the, co- the, you know, the coaching staff would have lost all credibility if they didn't give Beckton the job. Because, first of all, he's clearly the most talented competitor uh, looking for a starting tackle job. But second of all, he played great in the preseason, really just – I almost flawless in those exhibition games. He went out and took it. So it's renewed my hope that maybe Makai Becton can put, can, can resuscitate his career and put, put together a big year. Certainly hoping that's the case. Elijah Vera Tucker, a guy who kind of got lost last year. One of the most valuable players the jets had on offense. I mean, I'm not sure as valuable as Garrett Wilson or Brees Hall, but guy who played a bunch of different positions. Now he can settle back into the right guard spot. And, you know, you hope as long as everybody stays healthy at tackle, but he was really coming into his own last year. And if he stays healthy, I think he'll be able to complete that season. You know, I could see a pro bowl for AVT this year. And the last guy I'm going to mention this one, I'm not as convinced with, but Jermaine Johnson, the guy, the guy who's really turning heads during training camp had a very strong preseason and we'll get opportunities, may even get the opportunities week one because we don't know what Carl Lawson's status is. He's been dealing with a back injury. You know, he's been he's been out for most of the preseason. He's been out a couple of weeks. Jermaine Johnson could get a chance immediately. And you know, he's kind of the forgotten man. The Jets had these three stars they drafted early in 2022. Johnson was the fourth, he was the third player off the board, but he was the fourth guy of the four picks the Jets drafted. He was the one guy who I don't, you know, I don't want to demean his rookie season because i thought he was fine i thought he was solid but maybe the guy who really did not stand out did not like a look like, like a future star and this year it could be different so those are my guys that i'm watching this year and you know i'm gonna be optimistic i'm gonna hope that these guys add to the already impressive core of jets young players anyway that's all for today's episode this has been the lockdown jets podcast part of the lockdown podcast network your team every day is our motto as always if you enjoy the show hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode if you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source give it a five-star review and if you're watching on youtube give this episode a big thumbs up it helps us out it helps other jets fans find the podcast enjoy your weekend enjoy the nfl action and on monday we'll be back to talk about jets versus buffalo bills it'll be the jets to that 2023 season opener